Okay, what we're doing now is we're putting a rim joist onto the Fox Blocks prior to concrete placement. Now you got to remember, there's a lot of different ways to do it. There's a lot of different companies out there making specialized anchors to anchor to the concrete for your rim joist. What I'm going to do is old school. It's the oldest way we've been doing it, and that's just with anchor bolts. So just watch how I do it. I'll go through the procedure. This represents my top row block, and you got to remember, I use the wire clip. I reach in there, I put two of them per block around the top, and that's going to anchor that top so it doesn't move too much. Now I'm going to take my measuring tape, and I'm going to measure off the floor and find out where the bottom of my floor is going to be. And I made a mark there, and I made another mark right here. And then I took a chalk line, and I stretched it out there, snapped it, and I've got a nice blue line along there. Now I'm going to take my pocket saw. This is a pruning saw, and this actually works quite good, because I can poke this saw right through the block, and I can cut out holes. Now what I want to cut out, is if you see here, here's a tie and here's a tie. In between here, I want to cut that out. I know that the bottom of my rim joist is right there and it's a two by 10 that I'm doing. So I don't need to go right to the top of that two by 10, but I can measure up. That's gonna be nine and a quarter. So I'll go just below that. And I usually use these two lines here and I cut that out. And I do that depending on what the engineering is. Sometimes it's four foot on center, sometimes it's two foot on center, and you gotta find out what it is. Maybe it's 32 inch on center. There's different ways you can cut it though. One way is by using a hot wire gun. And this has a tip in it already. This one I use for electrical as well. You just push in, pull out. And I can actually sink this one in right here, pull it down and pull it back out. That's one way to do it. I'm gonna cut this out with a pruning saw. When I cut the top, I wanna cut on an angle. And the reason I want to cut on an angle is because when I get concrete in here, concrete's going to come out to the face of this. I want the entrapped air at the top to get into the concrete and back up to the surface when I do my internal consolidation. So I angle the saw up for that. For the bottom, you can go flat. I usually angle, I usually angle down just so I got a bit of a shelf going on there. And then I make my cuts on that. you reach in and you pull this block out and this is what I'm ending up with and I'm gonna cut these out at whatever spacing the engineer called for now I need to put my 2 by 10 up I'm here all by myself so I'm gonna use these just a, a simple deck screw they call these a low root screw but a deck screw you can find them just about anywhere and I'm just putting a couple of these deck screws in anchor right into my tie really well and I just put that right on the chalk line and the reason I do that is now I take I'm using a 2x10 uh, I can just rest that 2x10 right on those screws and that's gonna hold the 2x10 up for me and I it just helps me now you don't have to use a 2x10 you can use whatever you need you can use an LVL any engineered lumber you can use 2x12 2x6 2x4 even okay I've got my 2x10 anchored to the Fox block and it's not going to move on me now and that you're going to get a lot of holding power in that. They say that two screws will hold 500 pounds in shear so that's pretty good holding power. So now what you want to do next is get your anchor bolts in place. So now I take this out and I uh, get my, I use a paddle bit, you can use any type of bit, whatever you want. So that's what I use. I find out where that hole is and I know that it's between these two ties right here. So I'm going to drill a hole right there. Now some guys will go right in the center of the block. Sometimes you need it top and bottom. So it depends. You just got to find out what you want. I'll put in just one in the bottom here. So I get that hole drilled. The next thing is what kind of anchor bolt you're going to use. Now there's different types you can use. This one is, it's got this little bend here. It's galvanized. You don't need to be galvanized. That, this is a nice bolt and it, it's pretty inexpensive. That's one way. This is another one. It's just a half inch anchor bolt with a, just an L on the end. Here's another one that's a half inch anchor bolt with an L. There's other different ways you can do it. Um, this is what I use most commonly. So what you're gonna do is you'll reach in the wall and this is not plated. It's just a normal steel. You don't need to be plated on this. I reach in the wall and I find that hole and I poke the, the bolt through and the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to put the washer on it and I'm going to put the nut on it. Now that's already in place it's sticking halfway into the wall so I'm going to get good anchorage there 
and that's it. I put all my anchor bolts in place. A lot of times you go in a zigzag pattern with it. Sometimes you need two anchor bolts in every location. Sometimes you want to make sure that a joist is not going to hit right there. You're going to want to measure that out. And that's just another way to do it. Now when I place the concrete, this anchor bolt will be anchored or cast right into the concrete. And as you do your concrete, you'll tap that with your hammer and it'll be embedded really good. So that's just a very simple way to hang a floor and have it structural. And then the nice thing with this is the foam is continuous all the way up. So you've, you haven't lost any insulation value. So it's, it's a really good way to do it.